Thank you so much, Maggie. Welcome, welcome to all the savvy ladies joining us. And I understand there are a few savvy men who have popped into the webinar and who are calling in as well today. So thank you. We are going to talk about some strategies that can help you while you're working from home, help you with relieving the stress and some of the pressure. And while you may have heard of some of what we're gonna talk about before, what's gonna make this, I hope, what will make this a little different is we're going to look into the brain science. We're gonna like take it off the top of our heads and we're gonna examine our brains a little bit today so that we can understand what it is that's happening to our brain, why this is happening, and then hopefully we remember that. We're, we're opening up neuroplasticity, we're opening up Think about it like a new lane in the highway today so that during rush hour, we have one extra lane that we can use. We're opening up that neural pathway so that the next time we're faced with some stress, some pressure, we're, we're looking at ways to do things a little bit better in our work from home world that we go, oh, I understand what's happening to my brain. I get why this is happening. And I also know how I can do better, what I can do that can make things better. All right, so let's take a look at what can you control? Now, we've all been asking ourselves this, right? This is part of the toilet paper hoarding and buying all the beef and rushing out to the store and standing in those lines. And for a few moments, we feel that we've controlled our world. We feel that we're in control of what's going to happen with the virus. We're in control with our own personal lives. And then what happens is, as we put the toilet paper away, as we put more meat or chicken or whatever into the freezer, that high, that euphoria, that feeling of control starts to dissipate and it goes away. And it's not long after that that we're kind of, you know, we're back into that, that cycle of running out and hoarding everything again. And so what is it that we can control and why do we want to look at what we can control? So let's talk about how this impacts and how it affects our brain. We need to have schedule, ritual, systems, processes. Our brains connect to that. Think of how many, again, whether they're holiday rituals and whether you kind of like some of them or not, you kind of go along with the way Thanksgiving rolls or the holidays. Think about your schedule. What puts you on track? that you know makes you and helps you to be super successful, whether it's with your family and family planning, whether it's in business, whether it's with your finances, whatever that looks like for you, you've got set things that you do, that you know work. Well, what can you control now in the work from home world? Well, the first thing that you can have control of is E. O-B-D, end of your business day. Type in the chat, for those of you who have joined us uh, where you can, can use the chat, uh, type in the chat what that looks like for you. Have you said that? Have you thought about it? What's your end of business day? So let's start with today. Is it three o'clock on a Friday? Do you kind of say, I've had a long week, I've worked 14 hours, 12 hours days, I'm gonna give myself a break? Or are you going right up until the last minute, seven o'clock, then it's dinner, then it's family time, get the kids to bed, and then it's gonna be more work. And so you're never really setting end of business day. What does it look like? What is your end of business day? The reason we wanna think about this either the day before or we wanna plan it the morning of is because our brains sink into a schedule. It helps us think about it. When you know you have to pick your kids up at soccer practice, when you know you have to be at a, at a cocktail event, your brain sinks into organizing your day so that you can get where you need to be. The theater, you know you need to be there on time or the doors will close. It's the same thing that we want to create here and now in our work from home world. And hopefully we'll be able to translate this better when we get back into the office. So what does that work from home day look like for you? What is your start time? What is your end time? Now, not everything's controllable and there's going to be flexibility in our day, but if we can get as close to those targets, bookending our day, our start and our finish, if we can get as close to that as possible, we start to set a new habit. Because remember, our habits 
our behaviors. They're behaviors that we repeat over and over and over again until we rely on and we are doing this habit without even thinking about it. So for as long as we're working from home, create that start time, create that end time, and that's going to help to begin organizing you for your day. And organization helps us to get productive. Hard to get productive if we're not organized. Okay, dressing for the day. How many of you, again, shout out in the chat, let us know what's happening. How many of you are dressing for the day? Now, I know everybody's dressed right now. I don't assume that anyone is sitting pantless and just at their computers or their phones. Of course we're dressed. How are you dressed? This makes a difference. The brain is triggered by clothing. Now, you may not have thought about this when it comes to the workplace because a lot of us don't, right? We get up when we are leaving our homes. We have a portion of our closet. We have certain drawers. We know that this is what we wear at work. This is what we wear on the weekend. Because the lines are blurred right now, and everything is a little different and it's all melding together, a lot of us are wearing flip-flops, house slippers, sweatpants, and I'm not saying consider wearing a three-piece suit or put on your best dress and heels. That may not be the best option for the day for most of us, let's be honest. But what can you do that feels like work? The brain gets triggered by clothing. Think of it this way. When you're getting ready to go to the gym, you don't put on your best dress, your finest heels, and say, I'm ready to go work out on the treadmill. That's not what would think and calibrate your brain for success in exercise. As a matter of fact, if we're running in our best heels, it's probably going to be a disaster for not only our shoes, but for our bodies as well. We get out the sneakers. We have our running sneakers. Some of us have our sneakers that when we go to the gym, it's a, it's a different pair of sneakers. We put on our, you know, what, whatever we put on in the way of a t-shirt, a sports bra, whatever that is for you, you've got that workout clothing and it triggers the brain. And what is happening, whether you're conscious of it or not, subconsciously in the back of your brain, you're thinking, I'm going to run along the river today and I'm going to push myself to do that six mile. I know I can do it. I've been doing five miles. Like today is the day I'm going to break through. I'm going to do my six mile. Or you're thinking, hmm, I was on the treadmill in the gym yesterday. Today is weight day. What do, what do I want to work? I want to work my arms. I want to work my legs to be stronger. What does that look like? You're already picturing that as you're getting dressed because there are triggers that are happening in our brain as we're putting on our clothes. So use this in the same way that you would working out or going bowling or going to a barbecue or truly going to work, leaving your home. Allow those clothes to trigger you to where your mindset now says, okay, time for work, time to get organized, be productive. You might be wondering why I have this slide that has shoes. It's really important that we put on our shoes. Our shoes change our body language. And if you don't believe me, when we finish this webinar today, wear your slippers, walk across your bedroom, change to high heels, walk across your bedroom, and then do it with sneakers. And your body language changes. We move differently in different shoes. Again, shoes really set the tone for how we're going to move. Once again, we want to wear something. We don't want to be wearing slippers, even though they're cozy and they're fuzzy and they're warm. We want to put on shoes, socks if your shoes require that as well. Because again, it's setting our brain up. It's giving our brain the cues, time to get serious. Gonna be productive today. This is how I'm gonna do it. So on our next slide, we're gonna look at the number one way that we can really transition some of this organization, how we organize our day, what it is that we're controlling, and how we really lock into our brain and get the most out of our day. This is a great productivity hack. I teach this to all of my clients that I coach. It is focus on your top three. Again, maybe you're already doing this. In the morning, before you've used your device, do the brain dump. You know, we've all got a million things on our mind. To share with you yesterday, 
I had a list of 18 items that I dumped out that I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this all for the day. And then I thought, wait a second, what are my top three? And by your top three, I mean your top three goals, you know, working on your top three goals for the day, your tasks, your priorities, your projects. What does that look like? Do you need to create a pitch deck? Do you need to create more content? Is a client waiting for content? Do you need to have a, a coaching call with a client? Those might be your top three that you're going to work on each of those for today. It's like, if you get beyond that, it's like frosting on the cake, right? Anything extra is fantastic. We're going to do our brain dump. And then from our list, we're going to circle, star, highlight, whatever works for you. I like to get out highlighters. I love highlighters and colored pens. I just, I'm all about as much color in my life as possible. So I'm highlighting and then I'm starting to make notes. Once I highlight, what you do when you're writing something is you're already getting your brain aligned for the progress of your day and the roadmap of your day. It's kind of like saying we're going to take a road trip. <laughs> we all wish we were taking road trips right now. We're going to take a road trip and here's our map. This is the course that we're going to take to get from New York to Chicago. Oh, how exciting. We're, we're going to go a new and different way. Our brain already starts to align to the adventure and it's part of organizing the trip. So organizing our day is much like taking a trip. And if we want to make sure we get from point A to point B, we want to focus on our top three. Again, it's our goals, our tasks, whatever that looks like for you. Use whatever word. There's no, I really want to be clear with everyone. There's no right or wrong verbiage. There's no right or wrong way to create your list. Some people do it on Post-it. Some folks do it in their journal. Some people have a special notebook that says top three for the day. Do what works for you, what feels good. Some people don't need extra notebooks right now. Some people want something very separate and organized. Make this a morning routine, a new habit that you start. It's gonna keep your brain on track for the rest of the day. Now to continue with how we organize our day, how do we set up our desk? We need to have a designated desk. Now, for a lot of us who live in bigger cities, New York, San Fran, Chicago, DC, Boston, our homes, our apartments are not really meant for working from home all day, every single day. So that's a big challenge, let alone if we have a roommate, if we have a partner, if we have kids. So it's a little stressful, to say the least. So how do we get our brain on track? How is it that we're going to get the most out of the day? Like everyone knows, yes, have a designated desk, have a designated area. Some people are working from their dining room tables right now. And I've gotten a lot of emails that they say that, you know, they put everything away at the end of the day. And then it's like a scavenger hunt to find everything again in the morning. Really easy tip here. Get one of those big, um, those plastic boxes Put your charger in, put your laptop in, put your iPad, your phone, your pens, your pencils, your calculator, whatever you need on your desk, put it in one of the big boxes, containers at the end of the day, and then you don't have to have that morning scavenger hunt to find everything. Every time we are distracted, once we sit down and we go, oh, I forgot the pad, hold on, or we're looking for it on the desk, can't find it, it's cluttered, we disrupt the flow and it takes our brains over 20 minutes to kind of reconnect and get to that deeper work get really into the good stuff the creativity and how we're gonna really maximize the day and that's a lot of time wasted if we're constantly bouncing up and down so get your water get your coffee whatever your desk looks like for you now let's talk about the clutter on the desk I have a lot of folks when I go into the C-suite and I look at, at uh, different desks and offices and how they're set up, there's lots of stuff on big desks, lots of pens and pads and loose pieces of paper and post-its everywhere. And what I'm often told is, you know, Holland, this doesn't matter because my brain, my brain is strong and I can shut this out. And what I want to share with you is that clutter equals 
distraction. And when you are distracted, you cannot be the most productive. And since we're all trying to be the most productive, and, and that means focus. It means being focused, not experiencing brain fatigue. There's going to be enough distractions during the day that we can't help. And we have to be okay. We have to be settled into that space and that place to know that no day is going to be perfect. I'm going to set out. I'm going to have my top three priorities for the day. Maybe I get two done. Maybe I get one done. One is better than none. That's amazing. Good job to me because I was pulled in a lot of directions today. We will be able, our brain, our brains will partner with what it is we need to do when we don't have a lot of clutter everywhere. So make sure you are moving the clutter because clutter is one of the most distracting things for a brain to work with. It's almost like the brain is consistently saying, does not compute, cannot focus, going into brain fog. And then we just, we, we wonder why we're so tired and we're feeling a lot of anxiety. So these are all, these, these first few slides, this is really about how we organize the day because organizations got to come before we really look at being productive. So now we've got this little guy and um, I want to I, I want to I want to share with you that um, there was a test that was done in Australia. It's a SART test. It's a basically a response test. And there were two control groups, and they were working long days, lots of stress, lots of anxiety. <laughs> Raise your hand if that's you. <laughs> yes, it's all of you. It's all of us right now. And so what these folks decided to do is they had two test groups. So the first test group, they had micro breaks. It was the same questions. They mixed the groups, male, female, age range, the whole thing. And the first test group, when they got micro break in between some of the, the questions, they looked out at rooftops. It was a city, city view. And they looked out at rooftops, much like those of us who live in New York City look at. You know, we've got the water towers, lots of stuff. We don't even know what it is. A lot of concrete on those roofs, maybe pallets of bricks, just nothing to really inspire or uh, help us to be particularly creative. They had the second test group, and on their micro break, they looked out at rooftop that had grass and trellises with flowers and vines. And I think you probably know where this is going. The group that got to look at the grass, the group that got to have these little itty bitty micro breaks throughout the two hour test, which was then immediately repeated and it was done three times. The group that looked at the grass, at the trellises of ivy and flowers, three things differentiated them from the other group. Number one, they finished the test quicker than anticipated and quicker than the other test group. Number two, they had less errors. And number three, they were not as fatigued. So when they finished the test and then they were given a longer 10 to 15 minute break, they came back refreshed, revived, ready to go, not feeling brain fog, not feeling as though they were unfocused and they couldn't look at a computer screen for another two hours. They were ready to go. And as you can imagine, on that repeat test, it was the same. Again, finished exactly ahead of the other, of, of the other team, the other group. Less errors, more refresh. So how do we bring this into our day? Why am I sharing this with you? Our brain needs to have brain. We do not give ourselves workplace wellness. We feel that this this hustle culture, a little bit like a badge of honor. It's like, I multitask seven things at a time and I go straight through, I don't even get up for bathroom breaks. And that's not what we wanna be doing ever. And it certainly isn't the way we wanna be working now when we're under more pressure, there's more stress and we have a lot more anxiety. So the way that we can help to bring down the anxiety bring down those feelings of panic. It's not gonna diminish. 
what, what's going to happen is this is going to help. And again, using this little tiny, tiny habit every day is going to help you. And at the end of the day, again, based on your end of business day, maybe being five, six, maybe the latest, the latest seven, you're going to feel more refreshed. And so this little guy, these are sold. You can get things like this. I actually had taken this. I think I got him at a bodega and it was four bucks. Uh, Trader Joe's sells little Echeverias. Uh, Whole Foods has little plants when you walk in, five bucks. I mean, very inexpensive way. Put this on your desk and do exactly what they did during that start test that we know works. We know what the brain needs. Look away, see your little plant, blink, let your brain refresh. Do it for five to 10 seconds. Again, these are micro breaks that as you're typing those longer emails, as you're working on that, that deck, as you're working on that pit, creating that content, which we know can be tedious, and we do that deep, deep work, stop, turn, take your micro breaks, blink, because what we also forget is that we blink less when we are consistently on devices. And so being on devices all day long, we are experiencing a crisis with dry eye. Ophthalmologists will share with you, they've never seen so much dry eye as what they've seen in the last five to 10 years. And that number continues to grow. And when we don't blink, that doesn't give our brain a rest either. So looking at a little plant allows us to blink more. We refresh the brain. We, we give moisture to our eyes. And then we come back to the screen and it's like, I'm ready to go. Now, what we can do the bigger picture is we want to take our workplace wellness to the next step. And we want to put in some movement into our day and movement if we can potentially go outside. Uh, if you've got a backyard, you're really, really lucky. Those of you who are listening to this and whether you walk around the backyard, you know, 50 times in a circle, um, those of us who live by parks, Going out into parks, uh, if you live by something like this, it's a little more lush than a park. It's more like a forest. Uh, get your outside time. The reason we want to do this, what is this doing for our brain? Quick story. When my brother and I were little and we'd start fighting in the house and we'd uh, start complaining like, oh, we're so bored. I'm just, I'm so bored. My mom would say, all right, get outside and drink some green. And we used to laugh at her and we thought she was really nutty. We're like, our mom is crazy. She thinks you can drink green. Like, what does she think we're going to eat the grass? She's cuckoo. Well, she was a little ahead of her time. You actually can drink a lot of greens now. But what she didn't realize, or I guess subconsciously did, is that going out and being in nature for prolonged periods of time, and that can be as little as 15 minutes and then longer, is it relaxes our brain, gets us out of the loop. And what that does is if you're feeling a lot of stress, which a lot of us are these days, and our cortisol is spiking, and that's, you know, we wake up and we're used to maybe getting 100 emails in the inbox, and now we have 350. It's like everyone has gone on overdrive with the emails, spikes our cortisol immediately. Then the adrenaline is going, and then we start to feel fight, flight, or free. And our bodies are not meant to go into fight or flight 10, 20, 30 times a day. It's meant for when, you know, we're walking down the street and someone jumps out of an alley and we scream and we go into fight or flight. That's what that mechanism is for in our, our brain and our body. We're getting it consistently now because we hear, you know, Tyson's closed and we won't be able to get chicken and um, you know, so many died. And, and so we're constantly in this place of spiking our cortisol. When our cortisol, that stress hormone is consistently spiked, it lowers, it decreases the good brain hormone that we need to kind of propel us and keep us focused and functioning and productive and creative. Quickest way, most creative way 
bigger picture. We're going to use our little snail, our little guy that we're going to have on our desk and whatever that is for you. And I can't wait to hear what you all are going to get. And I hope you send me screenshots. It's going to be super exciting. Share that with myself and Savvy Ladies. We want to see what you're going to get for your desk. When we can go longer, 15 minutes or more, we want to go out and we want to drink green. My mom said, really drink it in through your eyes. And what's going to happen is if your cortisol has been spiking, nature automatically decreases your cortisol. So you're taking your stress hormone down and you're increasing, you're getting your endorphin to just have a party. And that makes us happy. And then we get serotonin that starts to increase. So we've got the good stuff increasing in our body and brain and the not so good stuff decreasing. Now what happens is this helps us at the end of the day to wind down and it helps us to sleep better. So spending time in nature recalibrates our brain and recalibrates us so that at the end of the day, it's going to help us sleep a little better. And I know that a lot of us, and it's been myself included, and when I don't give myself my, my time out in nature, um, my time to really, really recalibrate my brain for me, that wellness time, I don't sleep so well. And I'll lay in bed tossing and turning, going, gosh, Holland, what did, what did you do that was different today? And then I go, oh, you didn't follow your own rule. You didn't drink enough green. So getting out in nature, if you can really time block that, put that into your schedule, just like you're going to have your, your start time and your end of business day, and you're going to make that commitment because you know what that's going to do to your organizational skills, your productivity, creativity. This is going to help you boost creativity, give your brain some really positive, positive horm brain hormones, decrease the bad stuff, and that's going to help you to sleep better. It helps you to be super creative, and I think we all need that right now. Before we go, I just want to share a little bit about the news. A lot of uh, my clients who have reached out and teams I've been working with have shared that they have CNN on in the background all day long or Fox News or whatever your preferred news channel is. And they're kind of listening because they like to be updated and they, they like to be in the know. And if that's you, I would ask you why you would need that on all day long. Because unless you're in the media, and unless you need to have the stats at your fingertips reporting on this news, people are relying on you. Maybe the White House is in touch with you. In case we go to DEF CON 3, you're the one. Please keep the TVs on all day long. Read all the newspapers. The rest of us, give yourself a certain amount of time that you are going to listen to the news. For me, I've time blocked 15 minutes a day because the cycle it kind of repeats and you get all the same information. It's just a different person sharing their perspective. And the reason we don't want to be hours and hours and hours. So again, let's go back to the neuroscience of this. Our brains are automatic. Our brains are wired for something called negativity bias. Anything that is negative, our brains are right there because it's a, it's a survival. It puts us into survival mode. We need to know what's negative, what can threaten us, what can be a danger to us. We need to know that. And so anything that's negative, we're like right on it. We know from research, it takes five positive events or positive pieces of news to outweigh one negative. So we got a five to one. So think about it. If you're listening to two and three and four hours a day, of the consistent cycle with that negative, negative, it's not positive. What you're doing is it's like clutter on your desk. It's a distraction and it's playing in the subconscious, which is causing brain fog, causing your cortisol to spike, that stress hormone, and it's taking you away from getting what you need done for the day. So choose your 15 minutes. You'll be, you'll be super updated. And I always say, you know, whatever information is really meant to come to us, we'll get on the phone with someone, we'll be in a Zoom call, and someone will say, did you hear? And you'll say, no, I didn't. Well, you just heard. So clearly, you were meant to hear that whether you had two hours of news on or not. So really think about how much negativity you're putting in your brain 
and how much stress and anxiety and panic that's causing, and you can control that. So again, we started by talking about what you can control. And these are some simple, easy steps of how you can control some of, some of your day. And I wanna share my information with you. I'd love to hear from you. If you would like to hear more neuroscience about how to be more productive for yourself or with your teams, please reach out. And I think Maggie will have some, some questions if there are some of those. Yes, thanks Holland, that was great. Um, I'm not sure if you were seeing the messages in the chat um, as people were responding about their, their start and end of day. We had all different numbers there ranging from 4 o'clock to no end of day and, and start of day around 9 or 10 for most people. Um, and there's also a message here about, yes, the news makes me very stressed. Um, agree with what you said there. So with that, we'll move on to Q&A. So if you have a question, you can use the chat box, or you can also email info at SavvyLadies.org. And the first question for you is saying, I feel like I'm working all day now. I have my laptop open from when I wake up to when I go to bed, and I feel like it's what I'm really supposed to be doing and what I need to do to get everything done. How do I give myself some separation from work so I can go back to that work-life balance? Oh, thank you. That's a great question, and we are all feeling that. So thank you for expressing that for all of us. So first and foremost, if the first thing that we're doing when we wake up in the morning, and I, I think if I heard this correctly, Maggie, did I hear correctly? It's like right away, first thing in the morning, the laptop is open. Yeah. We're, what that is doing is you are placing yourself in fight or flight right from the beginning of the day. And when we get our, our hormones moving in that way and those brain chemicals moving in that way, it's kind of like, you know, going down the rabbit hole. It's much harder to get out once you've slipped down. Once you've fallen into a well, it's not impossible to get out, but boy, it's, it's really tough and we need a lot of people to help us. Right? So, what I would say, and for those of you who didn't write that in, and I know there are many of us, and I used to be doing that a lot as well, is really think about, again, let's go back to what you can control. And there is nothing that is so pressing if you're waiting up, waking up at six or seven or eight, again, unless you're in the media, that needs to be attended to. And we have to start training our clients and training um, our coworkers that we are not available and we're not answering emails at 6.35 in the morning. It's really unhealthy for us. And so there are a couple of ways to go about it. I'm not really sure what your, what your work situation is and if you maybe have your own business or you're self-employed or work for a big corporation. Have a conversation with your team about this on Zoom because what hasn't happened is we've transitioned and a lot of uh, organizations have not had this open dialogue and conversation about what the expectations are. So first we have to set expectations with others. We need to set the expectations with ourselves. And if you can start to get into the habit before you open up the laptop first thing in the morning, if you can start to get into that habit of really organizing your day and understanding that from a neuroscience, creativity, productivity perspective, that by organizing first, it's gonna help you stay on track, which means your day and the time of it in your day and your work day is going to shrink. Because once your brain is on track, again, think of it like the theater, uh, think of it like a baseball game, whatever it is that you attend, that you need to get to by a certain time, it's amazing how our days work out. It's amazing how we get there on time and we're able to finish all of our work. So if we're not setting what our top three goals are for the day, our priorities. We're not setting a start and an end time. That just gets broader and broader and broader. It's like food on a plate, right? If we load up and if we don't have portion control and we just set all the pots in front of us, we're just going to keep eating and eating and the food will be gone. So think about this as portion control. Maybe that's an easier way for folks to think about it, portion control, as we want to give ourselves portion control on our on our computers I hope that helps okay yes thank you uh, another question that we have for you is saying I've 
try to set a timer for 20 to 30 minutes to work on a task. Is that a good system to schedule breaks? Sometimes I'll look at how much time I have left, which is also a distraction for me. Great question. I personally find that uh, a time frame like that is too small to really deep dive and dig into what it is that I need to do for the day. So for me, it's anywhere depending on what it is that I need to accomplish. So for example, when I'm working on, if I'm heading to a conference and I'm working on a, a speech for a new client, I really need big time blocks. So I work in 90 minutes and I have a timer on for 90 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, I pause it if I'm in the middle of of you know creating something on the deck or, or if I'm in the middle of creating um, you, you know I'm in the stream of consciousness of a, of a of an idea maybe around the news and talking I want like oh I want to talk about negativity bias then I finish that particular sentence paragraph and I get up and I stretch and I go to the kitchen and I get water and I go to the bathroom and I specifically don't put a pitcher of water on my desk because that forces me to have to get up and move and have more steps to get the water. So 20, 20, 25 minutes, that seems like a short amount of time. It doesn't seem like enough time to really deep dive, dig into what you're doing. Try 60 minutes. Set your, your clock for start with 60 minutes and let us know how that works for you. Okay, great tip. Thank you. It looks like we have two more questions for you. So the sure. next one is is asking, what what can you do if you don't have a backyard or a park nearby? How can you get some movement into your day? Great. Uh, do you, are you able to, are you someone who normally does yoga, Pilates? Um, a lot of these studios have been uh, working through apps and they've been charging $10 online. Um, there are other, um, I think, um, I think oh, I'm trying to remember. There, there are a few, we can, we can maybe savvy ladies, we can, we can post some of those afterwards if you don't have access to finding that. But within your, um, within, there are apps that will help you with movement in your community. If you go to a gym, a lot of the gyms have created with um, the varying, um, trainers, they've created online uh, exercise routines, physical therapy. If you're someone who's been in physical therapy and maybe you need movement there, I know physical therapy studios have also been creating online. So however you're connected into your community, reach out to your community. The other thing that you can do is if you live in an apartment building, um, go up and down the stairs. When it snows and it's really bitter, bitter cold in New York City, I, I do not embrace the cold and the wind. What I will do is I'll go in the stairwell and I'll go up and down the stairs. And I'll do that, you know, we have 20 floors and I'll go down to the first floor and then I'll, I'll go up to the 20th and then I'll try to do that a couple of times during the day. And so that's something that you might be able to do. What about walking around the block? I've also used that sometimes when I don't have a lot of time in, in the city and I can't really, um, I can't get to the gym. I'll just go outside and walk around the block four or five times. My doorman thinks I'm nuts because he, and he's like, what are you doing? And then I go back in. So maybe you can, can do some of those um, for options. And if, if those don't work or it doesn't sound like that's going to work for you, reach out, shoot me an email, and we can, we can brainstorm and figure out something that, that you could definitely do. Okay, great. And I just saw the message saying that that's a good idea. Uh, thank you for that. So we'll, we can follow up with that. And another question for you is saying, I'm excited to implement these new strategies. Not sure my team really gets it. Is there a way to set a clear boundary with my colleagues who are work maniacs? Well, uh, once again, uh, especially as Americans, we suffer the highest percentage of stress anywhere in the world uh, when the tests are done on, on stress and anxiety, um, especially within the workplace. And there, there is this hustle mind, mindset and there is the idea of cultures that we work around the clock and we are consistently available. Uh, a couple of ways to gently move forward is 
you can on your signature line, again, check, check with your supervisor, check that this would be okay. Maybe have an offline conversation with your boss about would it be all right to have one, a Zoom call where we all kind of talk about boundaries? Because the, the one issue I'm hearing over and over again when I work with teams is no one was prepared for this and how could we be? And so there aren't boundaries. We don't know expectations, we don't know boundaries. And so we're all kind of flying blind and we're doing this together and we're burning out. So have that offline conversation and see if there's a, a, a way to potentially um, you know, set up a call and I can help you with that so you can, you can reach out to me as well. And then as far as some of your colleagues, maybe saying to three or four of them, hey, can we maybe set some parameters on our day moving forward? I don't know about you all. I am feeling burned out. I'm feeling like, you know, this, what is it? Five weeks, six weeks. We, none of us even know the day half the time. It's, it's felt like it's been five years and taking a toll. And let's remember we need to, our bodies need to be strong as do our minds. So we don't get sick and we keep our immune system up and stress depletes our immune system. So how about if we set the parameters that we're only going to talk, you know, 10 to 11 a.m. unless it's an emergency or we're going to start our days at nine. We'll all be on at nine for Snapchat if there's anything important. Otherwise, I won't be on Snapchat till 3 p.m. or whatever that looks like for your organization and each each group, each office is different. Start setting parameters, which really are boundaries. And if this doesn't, again, if this doesn't fit because I don't know your specifics, please reach out to me. My information is on the slide and we'll, we'll figure something out for you that will work. Okay, great. And I just wanted to share, I saw in the chat a, a message that when this person is on a call, they're always walking around in the apartment during that call and that it's a great way to really get some movement and increase steps in the day. So I, I thought that was a, a good tip. A great tip. Yes. Wonderful to do that. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So with that, those are the questions that we have. So I want to thank you, Holland, for an excellent presentation. I, I loved hearing all the, the tips you had for us today, and I'm sure everyone learned a lot, and I'm seeing a lot of messages of thank you in the chat here. So I want to thank everyone for joining us as well. We hope you'll be joining us again, and we hope everyone stays healthy and, and gets through this. Thank you so much, Holland. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, all of you, that you took time out of your day. I'm so grateful for that. Let, let Savvy Ladies know uh, how you're doing. As you all know, they're an amazing organization, so we want to keep supporting them any way that we can. And if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I really do share my information so that you will use it. So thank you, thank you for being here. And thanks, Savvy Ladies, for sponsoring this. Thanks, Holland. Bye-bye, hey, everybody. Bye.